Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about transmembrane proteins. And you know uh, that transmembrane proteins are also known as integral proteins. So the term of you heard about the integral proteins, they also refer to as transmembrane. So same as integral proteins. So transmembrane proteins or integral proteins, these are the type of proteins that are embedded in the cell membrane. For example, if I draw the cell membrane here, let's say this is the cell membrane and we know the cell membrane is made up with all those phospholipids where we have the uh, hydrophilic head surrounding uh, and facing the water and soluble uh, content and the hydrophobic tail is making the hydrophobic section of that membrane. In this case, the protein, this transmembrane proteins are embedded in the membrane. It is transmembrane that means it is transferred from outside to the inside of that membrane. Uh, and sometimes it could be a channel, it could be any uh, signaling molecule or functions could be many different kinds, majorly six different functions are played. So let us look at here at the details process of this. These integral proteins, uh, they span lipid bilayer. That means that I have told you that they are spanning means they are going from outside to inside of the cytosol. So they are in touch with cytosol, they are in touch with the extra cellular matrix as well as they are embedded in the membrane. So they are interacting with the phospholipids in the membrane too called transmembrane integrals and hydrophobic regions consist of one or more stretches of non-polar amino acid sequences because you know uh, there are amino acids which are non-polar or hydrophobic there are amino acids which are hydrophilic now in this case all those hydrophobic amino acids are facing towards uh, the hydrophobic tails of the lipid and the hydrophilic uh, conditions are inside right if they are providing any channel so most of the time these transmembrane proteins are having alpha helix structures because you know proteins are having secondary structures it could be alpha helix or beta sheet uh, though beta sheets are present in membrane but they don't present as beta sheets they are usually present as a more sophisticated structure called beta barrel we'll see that later but most of the cases they are made with alpha helix because alpha helix found to be very much good interacting with all those lipid molecules on the membrane so that's why these things happen like this. As you can see here in this picture, you can see all these proteins are embedded. So all these proteins, these are transmembrane proteins. As you can see, transmembrane proteins. Now uh, there are three different types of topology that is actually possible in this case. First topology, as you can see it here, it's a single, single helix or a helical bundle. That's it, single helix. This is an alpha helix. This helix is single. On the second topology, this is alpha helix. It's a multiple. I mean, this is a uh, helical bundle that means a lot of helix are combined together they are added one after another so all these these are helix and those helix are uh, those helix are added here one after another like this and this so they are transferring the membrane uh, but multiple helix residues are embedded in the membrane right both have N terminal as well as C terminal now if you look at it in the helix conditions as both of these cases N terminal presents outside the membrane when outside the cell and C terminal in the cytosolic part of the cell usually they are embedded in this way during the process of protein synthesis and the third uh, topology that is possible is due to the formation of beta barrel or beta sheet it, it is actually made up with beta sheets as you can see multiple number of beta sheets are arranged one after another and loops are kind of attaching them all them together it's kind of counterclockwise situation as you can see it here like this it's arranged one after another but actually it forms just like a barrel shape why they form barrel because if you see all those beta sheets are doing this or beta strands are doing the structure so outside you can see outside is the region where this barrel is interacting with the lipid molecules because in most of the cases this uh, beta barrel, I mean beta strand structures, they are made up with hydrophilic molecules, hydrophilic amino acids. So it's kind of difficult for them to be present in the membrane because membrane is most of the time lipid content, right? So for the interaction between the membrane's lipid, obviously uh, this protein should have a hydrophobic content and that content is present only the outside region and inside there are hydrophilic sections. 
So if you look at here, uh, each of those different features, uh, first one is the alpha helix feature. Alpha helix is meant to be in the cell membrane. In most of the proteins that you see, the transmembrane proteins or integral proteins, they will be made up with alpha helices. Because alpha helix, as you can see it here, this is multi-alpha helix structure. Now all this surface, as you can see, this whole surface as well as this surface, they're interacting with the lipid layer i mean the hydrophobic layer of the lipid so obviously the amino acid that are present in this whole locations will be obviously of hydrophobic type right on the other hand if you look at here the interaction between the alpha helices it themselves could be hydrophobic or hydrophilic that doesn't matter but all these things that are interacting with the hydrophobic content of the lipid should have a made with hydrophobic amino acids. So if we see here, this is the alpha helix and these are the different sections of hydrophobic. These are the lipids that are interacting with the alpha helix, different regions of the alpha helix and actually attaching with them. And this is possible due to only hydrophobic nature of the amino acid that is making the alpha helix there. And this is an example of the proteins that we see as alpha helix structure. The example uh, here is uh, the single helix or helical bundles, as you can see, single helix or helical bundle is possible. In this case, the helical bundle, as you can see, uh, this is the top view. So, the top view here. If you look from the top view, you can see multiple, multiple alpha helices. They are arranged one after another and in contact with one after another. And these are the lipid molecules that are surrounding them. Okay. And the example of such case is human growth factor. I mean, human growth hormones, uh, receptors and insulin receptors. Like, you know, uh, epidermal growth factor receptor, right? This is an example of this kind of multi-alpha helix bundle transmembrane protein. Example is insulin receptor. This is an example. ATP binding cassette family example is CFTR, cystic fibrosis uh, transmembrane receptor. That is another thing here, right? Or any seven transmembrane receptor that is the G protein linked receptors or this is called as G protein coupled receptor or GPCR. This is another example of this multi helix uh, transmembrane protein because it is seven time transmembrane, uh, I mean transferred through the membrane. That's why it's called 7TM also. Okay. <clears throat> Now the second uh, structure possible that is the beta barrel structure we have already discussed. Now normally beta sheet or beta strand cannot present in the membrane because in this case uh, they need to have the hydrophobic content outside which is in direct contact with the lipid hydrophobic region. So in those regions should be made up with hydrophobic molecules. On the other hand the inner side of it if it's a barrel if I, if I draw it if it is a barrel like this let's say this is a barrel. And these are the sections which are surrounding, which are interacting with the lipid layer. Let's say these are the lipid, these are the lipid molecules out there, out surrounding out there. Okay, so this the lipid layer. So obviously these regions should be made with hydrophobic content. On the other hand, as this is a barrel, you know, barrel means there will be outside and also inside as a kind of channel like structure. So inside that barrel, in this region, this inside region, this part can be made up with uh, hydrophilic. This could be hydrophilic, okay, but rest of the part are hydrophobic. Remember, the outside regions should be hydrophobic, but inside can be hydrophilic, and that's what uh, the thing about beta barrels. You can see the beta splitted structure, the beta sheet. They, the backbone of those beta sheets, they are interacting with each other by the hydrogen bonding that we all know. Okay, and finally, once they make this hydrogen bonding structures, and then they form this beta barrel, then the outside the outermost amino acid structures are interacting with the lipid and they are facing the lipid. This is an example again picture as you can see uh, this is a beta barrel structure and these are the alpha helical structure though those things will be present outside probably in the inside you can see this is a beta barrel. Barrel simply looks like this is kind of uh, structures like like and they form a barrel like shape like that. Okay, so again, this is a top view of the barrel. You can see it might be some alpha helical region outside or loop like structures inside, whatever. But actually, it is made up with, and you can see all the surrounding regions. Let me pick another color here, it's also there. All these regions are surrounded. These regions will be all made up with hydrophobic amino acids. All this case, hydrophobic amino acid. But inside this inner portions, inner regions like this, this or this regions made up with hydrophilic uh, amino acid regions. Okay. 
these are the PDB numbers that are provided you can also see them in your uh, computer and you can view them so that's that's it and this is a uh, mostly this this these examples of beta balance are found in case of gram negative bacteria right and the example is porin right and in this case they are kind of non constitutive membrane acting toxins most of the cases like porins you know porins create small holes in the membrane so they are acting as smaller holes and where through which other particles can move and migrate now if you look at the functions of uh, this whole thing, the functions of uh, all those different types of uh, proteins, transmembrane proteins that are available, there are six major type of functions that are possible. For example, if we begin with this one, uh, this is acting as a channel, I mean the ion channel as you can see, this is an ATP donor here and this is acting as an ion channel, uh, simply ATP pump right so this pump is helping most of the cases the transmembrane protein that are present they are having majorly two different functions one is three important functions majorly one is acting as a transporter molecule which helps in passing of all those components from uh, outside the cell inside the cell or something like that second thing they can act as a signaling molecule right as a signaling receptor third is they can act as a signal cell cell direct interacting molecule also so this this case this is an active transport where atp is required so it's a kind of transporter in this case it can act as membrane bound or membrane attached enzyme where you can see substrate can go and convert into product and finally we get this product right uh, as an enzyme uh, third thing it can act as a signal molecule as you can see it here uh, signal receptor molecule especially because a signal molecule will sit and the receptor molecule will ultimately interact with it and send some signaling and other downstream processing uh, inside the cell. An example of this is epidermal growth factor receptor right or GPCR G protein couple receptor plenty of examples out there. It can act as uh, the glyco I mean the glycoprotein if any of these cases the sugar moiety if it's attached with uh, this transmembrane proteins in many cases in fact in most of the cases it is attached and all those glycoprotein component they can act to produce a, what we call an extracellular matrix as you can see it here as extracellular matrix attachment site right or hosting site or it can be another direct cell cell interaction so this is direct cell cell interaction due to the presence of this glyco uh, protein component I mean the you know, sugar moiety because you know for the direct interaction between proteins uh, and cells we need this kind of structure special structures with which this ligand and the proteins can interact with themselves or as you can see in this case this is also cell cell interaction but without the presence of a sugar moiety in direct protein protein interaction so you can see these are the six completely different type of functionalities played by transmembrane proteins and they are extremely important because we can't exclude them if you exclude all those transmembrane proteins all this functionality will go like cell signaling will go as well as the extracellular matrix function will go and cell cell interaction will go now as we know the structure and features and functions of all those transmembrane proteins is the time to know how do you uh, actually understand the structure and know the structures and all these things for understanding the structures of those proteins we need to take those proteins away from the membrane we need to take them out and then we need to check the functionality but how could you do that because there is a huge problem let's say the hydrophobic domains that are present let's say this whole section these are the hydrophobic domains uh, that are available in those transmembrane proteins so if we can extract that protein out that hydrophobic domain will no longer can contact with water and actually uh, it creates a problem so how could you take them out because uh, surrounding we have solutions which is water based so hydrophobic section will not interact with water so that's a problem to do that we need to have a kind of snatcher molecule here and the snatching thing is done due to the presence of detergents detergent molecules you know they are acting as a kind of masking agent they will mask this hydrophobic domains and you know detergent molecules are mimicking the structure of lipids uh, the phospholipids because the detergents are also having hydrophilic regions here in green, yellow color here as well as the hydrophobic sections that is simple this one these structures so this hydrophobic structures will interact with the hydrophobic uh, surrounding of those transmembrane protein while hydrophilic structure face the water and solute contents and then it can easily 
take that protein fragment out from the cell membrane that's what we can do sometimes we can also add lipids in among them lipid can come out with it but ultimately we treat it with detergent and so on we can snatch those protein particles away from the cell membrane another way of doing this is called lipopeptides using lipopeptides again the same thing lipopeptide means we have a lipid like structure attached with a peptide as you can see this is a peptide let's say alpha helix this is an alpha helix and we have this lipids these are the lipid contents so lipids attached with peptides lipopeptides though the maximum content is peptide but we have lipids attached in both the terminal if you see it here this is the protein that we need to take out and these are the different alpha helix segment that are these are the alpha helix segments present and this is the lipid molecule and we know the lipid is hydrophobic so it will interact with the hydrophobic region of the protein so you can see here that this whole sections this surrounding region these are hydrophobic for the protein which is interacting which is here interacting with this lipid surrounding here and then peptides are surrounding them so ultimately what happens lipids are inert so the situation this is a protein so this is a protein now we add lipids but lipids are also hydrophobic so it's not a good idea to add lipids so what we do we tag lipid with proteins these blue things are proteins. so now what we know is that we are creating a package like structure surrounding our desired protein here where we have ultimately hydrophilic region outside but we can take the protein out using this structure but if you use detergent detergent itself provides this hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions and we don't need to add and construct all these structures together and the third uh, this is a kind of new uh, discovery within nano disk the same thing using nano disk is simply the goal is that this transmembrane protein to, to put this transmembrane protein in environment that mimics that lipid bilayer better than micelle so you can see it here again the target protein will be there what we'll do we'll add certain hydrophobic i mean uh, we add certain uh, molecule which contains both hydrophobic as well as hydrophilic things like just like phospholipids things so both things are there so hydrophobic will face towards the protein hydrophobic region hydrophilic will face outside and then we can take it out the simple thing we form kind of form kind of discs around all those proteins that we need to separate by providing those hydrophobic and hydrophilic structures uh, all attached with one and then we take that out this this kind of structure will form and then we can take this thing out right so this is called nano disks right and it's actually uh, from the stevens Liger lab in uiuc so this kind of modern research it's a kind of good research and we can take things out like that using this technique out there okay so this is how we take those protein sound and then study them then we do all the stuff of sequencing the protein and looking at the structure and finding how that function actually works because in the membrane proteins like any proteins any other proteins also the most important thing is the structure the structural feature of membrane protein will be hugely different i mean different than the structural feature of a soluble protein or globular protein so if you look at here all these membrane proteins they have multiple domains if you look at here this peptide as a stretch they will have multiple domains multiple sections of hydrophobic stretch sequences and most of the cases they tends to form the alpha helices uh, for making them properly interacted with the lipid bilayer right so that's kind of it for our discussion today i hope this video helps you to understand transmembrane proteins if you like the video hit the like button share this video with your friends and definitely subscribe to my channel to get more videos like this thank you